and then uh, increments it. So I could as well put uh, I could put this all in one sentence, i plus plus. So I'm gonna s get the value of i, and then it's gonna be iterated, well incremented, sorry, and I could just put it at that. And now I, I'll put uh, my ending get ch return zero. So let's test this out, and hopefully it should work. So you see, i is zero, one, two, three, four. This is the first time it runs y is i is zero. Uh, the second time it runs it is one. Third time two, three, four. So, but notice what happens if I put plus plus i in here. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Why? Why the difference between be, because plus plus i first uh, it uh, looks at this expression and says, okay, let's increment i. So i becomes when the first time it runs, i becomes one, and uh, so it it uh, increments i to one and then prints it out to the screen. So the last time it runs, uh, i is four, right? And then we write, we have the C out statement. The va value of i is, but i is gets incremented inside the loop, so that's why it shows five, even though this is while i is less than five. So this is actually the value of i, uh, not really the value of i, but the value of i plus one. And now this makes more sense because i is actually uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and i plus one is one, two, three, four, five. So this is this was just a a while loop. So let's write the same thing in a for loop. And uh, as I said, for loops are nothing to be scared of. They're they're really cool. Integer i equals zero. Don't forget the semicolon. Next, i is less than five. Next, uh, i plus plus. So or you could say you could say plus plus i here, and we will get the same exact. Don't forget the opening brackets and the closing brackets. We need those. And we'll get the same exact thing as we did in the last uh, while loop. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, because th there's the difference. I'm incrementing i here and here, so it increments by two every time it runs. So I'll take out this incrementation, and it, then we will get uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Now there's a difference uh, in the while loop when we said plus plus i. Uh, it it just um, did zero one uh, one two three four five, and here when we said plus plus i, it did uh, this well zero one two three four. Why is that? Because plus plus i uh, happens at the end of the loop, so i is actually incremented at the end of the loop. So we get the real value of i, and then it is increment incremented. So you could instead of doing this, you could um, omit this parameter and put plus plus i here, and you'll get exactly the same thing as you did in the last while loop. At least I think so. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, you need to have these three uh, semicolons, but you don't have to have this exact like statement condition. You could just have this could be a for a loop for blank blank blank. So you could say int i equals zero for uh, i is less than ten, and then you could say that's it. Oh, this could be a for loop. And once again, it works. Why I omitted these two parameters, but I defined int i here and I defined plus plus i here, so uh, it still works. Uh, so that's an example of a for loop. And they're pretty cool if you have to loop uh, something a lot of times. So let's just uh, run through a quick example of some use of for loops. Uh, say I want to get the, the prime numbers between 1 and 100, whatever. So uh, it's going to be actually nested for loop. So for int your i equals 0, i is less than 100, i plus plus. So here is my main for loop, and this is gonna i is gonna be uh, all the numbers that I check. 
So I'm going to check, uh, actually I'm going to start by checking it 2, because 2 is the first prime number. So now I have my main for loop, and I'm going to put a ending bracket here. So now that I have my main for loop, I'm going to put another for loop inside that checks uh, every number if it's prime or not. So for uh, integer j equals 0, uh, or let's put 1, 2 actually, 2 because the first, uh, if a number is divisible by 2, it's not prime. So I'm going to uh, actually put a boolean type in. I don't know if you've heard about boolean, but uh, bool, they are defined as bool, and they have two values, true or false. So bool is prime. Uh, yeah, so bool is prime. And uh, by default, before running this loop, I'm going to say bool is prime equals true. So I'm going to try to prove that uh, that i is not prime. And let's see if well we'll see if I manage to. So i is less than the square root of i. Uh, why do I do this? I do this to save effort. Uh, and oops, j plus plus. Sorry. And j is less than the square root of i. Because, as you know, if uh, a fact, if a number is divisible by uh, something under its square root, it's not prime. And if it's not divisible by anything under the number square root, it is prime. So that I'm just saving myself effort there. But to use the square root function, it's included in C math. So you have to include C math. I didn't think about that, but okay. So here is our secondary loop. If, now we have our if statements, if i modulus operator, uh, modulus returns the remainder from division, so if i modulus j is equal to 0, uh, bool is prime equals false. So actually here I don't need to define bool again because I put bool is prime here. So is prime equals true if it's uh, divisible and it leaves a remainder of 0, is prime equals false. So after this, I'm going to say um, if, oops, so this is, this is in the big for loop, in the big for loop, if is prime equals true is equal to true. Um, I'm going to say C out prime found and I'm going to put a C out to the output stream. I'm going to C out I and then I'm going to skip a line. So this uh, will and that's pretty much it. So this is, well, uh, is a simple algorithm that should give me uh, all prime numbers between 1 and 100. And let's test it out. Oh, you see there's a glitch there. Uh, 4 and 9. Um, that's why does that happen? Because j is less than or equal to the square root of 9. Because, uh, yeah, that's a glitch. And I forgot to put that in. And so now look, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, etc. And it gave us all the prime numbers between 1 and 100. Isn't that cool? Okay. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And um, yes, so this algorithm, why, why less than or equals to? Because if we check for 4, and uh, then 2 is less than the square root of 4, is not less than the square root of 4 so this never runs and it 4 is considered a prime which is not true so that's why I said less than or equal to and yeah and that's an algorithm for finding prime so if you want the first thousand prime just put a thousand primes in here and you'll get the first thousand primes ain't that pretty cool yeah and it's really fun so thank you very much for watching this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again very soon Next tutorial is going to focus on arrays. Thank you again and have a nice day.